My mom said to me, you know, sweetheart, one day you should settle down and marry a rich man. And I said, Mom, I am a rich man. Do you think men are important? Well, like for what? <laughs> not everyone knows the dark part of the life of Pop Queen Cher. Her life was not always filled with sunshine and rainbows. Rather, there were storms and waves. She has spent 80 years of her life and still her state of mind is in misery. The inner child who is traumatized. In this video, we will dig back into the time and see what actually made her life so dark, starting with her family and childhood, as to see the actual roots. Childhood, family. The wedding of Cher's parents was a wrong decision on its own. Her mother, Georgia Holt, was an American singer and songwriter who fell in love with John Paul Sarkisian at very young age. The age in which their love bloomed made them think that they can live with each other. They got married happily, but soon after the wedding, Georgia realized that she don't want this all. It was never in her list to get married at this early age. And the colors she imagined in her mind are not even real. She decided to leave John Paul, but he requested her to stay with him just for a short period of three months. He set the condition that, after three months, if she wants, she can leave. Georgia agreed, and then in the span of three months, Georgia was pregnant now. There was just this reason for her to stay and not leave, but when Cher was about 10 months, when her, her parents' relationship ended due to not being able to be stable, John was a drug addict. He was into these ugly and bad things. Their father-daughter relationship was never good. They never spoke to each other, and when they did, it was always the small conversation. This left their relationship in broken pieces and share no good memories of her biological father. Amazingly, the actual father figure who treated her like daughter and talked to her was the third husband of Georgia, actor John South Hall. He and Georgia were married for five years, but due to some conflicts, their marriage met the same fate of divorce. Georgia's life was like this. She was married seven times, and none of them worked. We can see how the life of Cher was actually shaped from the childhood, how much influenced she was from this all, and especially her mother. Even though Georgia was a singer, they never found the financial stability in their life. Because of this, Cher had to go out and work to help herself and her mother. She took part in small occasions, singing in movies a bit. When Cher was small, their condition got so worse that Georgia had to send Georgia to the Catholic orphanage for weeks. She had to stay with her grandparents for a long time while her mother tried to make their life stable. This made everything so confusing that one day they were eating a little from packed food to other day in the restaurants. Their life was all of ups and downs. At one place, Cher mentioned that she was ashamed of her clothes and shoes and that her mother said, not to waste money on these things. She had to go to school wearing rubber bands on her shoes to keep the back from falling. Keep the back from falling. School life and teenage. School was a constant battle for Cherilyn Sarkeesian, the girl who would become the iconic chair. Unlike the confident persona she'd make later, her teenage years were filled with insecurity and a learning disability that made traditional schooling a frustrating struggle. Cher had dyslexia, a condition that makes it difficult to read, write, and spell. Letters seemed to jump around on the page, and putting her thoughts on paper felt like trying to catch cats. This wasn't a secret Cher enjoyed sharing. In a world that valued smarts and good grades, her dyslexia felt like a shameful burden. To the people she was a fool, a stupid who could not do anything, it was a fun thing for her classmates to watch her true and fail. It was as if she could not improve it. How could she when she hardly to put the words back in its place? She wouldn't be diagnosed until much later, leaving her to live with the feeling of being stupid or slow. While others used to understand the class, her mind was lost in fashion. Clothes, new trends and music reading was a particular torture. Classmates devoured novels, while Cher struggled to read even simple passages. History lessons about faraway lands and complex events felt meaningless when the words themselves danced before her eyes. She'd zone out, doodling in the margins of her notebooks, feeling a pit of frustration grow in her stomach. This frustration often boiled over in class. Participating in discussions felt like an impossible feat. How could she express her ideas when the very act of reading was a battle? Teachers, unaware of her struggles, might misinterpret her silence for stupidity. Their criticism stung, leaving Cher feeling even more like a failure. Despite all the challenges, Cher wasn't about giving up. She possessed a strong determination and a strong sense of self. Even at a young age, she found solace in expressing herself through fashion and music. While classmates buried themselves in textbooks, Cher pored over fashion magazines, sketching designs, 
and dreaming of a world beyond the confines of the classroom. Music became her escape. She'd lose herself in the rhythm and lyrics, finding a voice she couldn't quite express with words. School friendships were another minefield for Cher. She craved connection, but her struggles with dyslexia often left her feeling like an outsider. She might appear cold or disinterested, a shield to protect herself. Making true friends who understood her struggles felt like an impossible feat. However, Cher's strong personality and creative spirit did attract some genuine connections. She found solace in classmates who shared her love for music and fashion. These friendships, though maybe not vast in number, became her lifeline, a reminder that she wasn't alone in her struggles. Looking back, Cher's school years were a time of hardship and self-discovery. The undiagnosed dyslexia cast a long shadow, but it also fueled her determination to succeed on her own terms. She learned to cope with her challenges, finding her voice through music and fashion. The seeds of the confident and iconic chair were sown during these difficult teenage years. Starting of career and wedding to son Bono. Cher dropped out of school after 11th grade. Determined to chase her dreams, she went to Los Angeles, the land of glitz and glamour. In LA, Cher landed in a place called the Ronells, a boarding house known for aspiring artists. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows though. The roommates, unimpressed by Cher's lack of funds, eventually kicked her out. Here's where fate stepped in. Cher met a young musician named Sonny Bono as to say her own angel, who, unlike the roommates, saw her potential. He took her in, offering her a couch to crash on and a shoulder to lean on. Sonny, with his musical ambitions, and Cher, with her powerful voice and undeniable stage presence, were a perfect match. They started performing together, their contrasting styles creating a unique sound. Sonny, with his smooth sound, played the straight man to Cher's energetic and sometimes outrageous persona. Soon, they became Sonny and Cher, a popular folk rock duo. People wanted them together to see their romance. Their big break came with the song, I Got You Babe, in 1965. It became a chart-topping hit, taking them to fame. They capitalized on their success with a variety show, the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour, a mix of music, comedy sketches, and plenty of outrageous outfits, a signature style that would become synonymous with Cher. However, their onstage chemistry didn't necessarily translate to offstage bliss. Their relationship was complex. They got married in 1969, more for show business than true love. Both had wandering eyes. Sonny was looking out for other girls while Cher had other men, and most of the time they used to bring their partners in their own space, and their marriage was filled with ups and downs. By the mid-70s, their popularity became low, and so did their marriage. In a shocking turn of events, Sonny announced their divorce on their own show in 1974, leaving Cher to pick up the pieces, both professionally and personally. Suddenly, a single mom, Cher faced a mountain of challenges, the financial burden and the calculations she never thought she would face. The burden of managing their careers, which Sonny had largely handled, fell squarely on her shoulders. But Cher, a fighter at heart, wasn't about to give up. She went on a solo career, reinventing herself with a disco sound and a more glamorous image. In 1975, she launched her own show, simply called Cher. It was a gamble, but it paid off. The show showcased her singing talent, comedic timing, and of course, her ever-evolving fashion sense. Cher became a hit, proving that she was a force to be reckoned with on her own terms. Cher's story is one of reinvention and never giving up on your dreams. After her much-publicized divorce from her singing partner and husband Sonny Bono, many might have thought her career would fade, but Cher, a firecracker from a young age, wasn't ready to be written off. She had a new dream, brewing to become a respected actress. This was a big leap. Going from chart-topping pop star to serious film actress wasn't easy. It took a lot of hard work and dedication. But Cher, ever the fighter, wasn't afraid of a challenge. She poured her heart and soul into acting, and the results spoke for themselves. The young woman who once dreamt of fame was finally getting the recognition she craved. It wasn't just fame, though. Cher was winning hearts and awards with her captivating performances. She became an inspiration, showing everyone that it's never too late to chase a new dream. In interviews, Cher often talked about perseverance. She'd say things like, don't give up, don't let anyone tell you no. She knew that achieving success often meant sacrifices. In her world, sometimes you had to let go of other things. Maybe it meant putting relationships on hold, 
or missing out on certain experiences, but Cher believed that if you truly desired something, the sacrifices were worth it. Her hard work paid off. The little girl with big dreams became a Hollywood powerhouse. Awards piled up and fans adored her. It was like a scene straight out of a movie, the underdog making it to the top. Cher became so famous, people only needed to hear her first name to know who they were talking about. She wasn't just a star, she was an icon. Here's a little known fact, Cher almost never existed. Her own mother, Georgia, was young and not ready for a baby when she was pregnant with Cher. Georgia even considered having an abortion. Thankfully, she changed her mind at the last minute. Cher grew up knowing this story, and it probably left some scars. It can't be easy knowing you weren't exactly planned, but maybe that's part of what made Cher so determined. Maybe it fueled her fire to prove herself, to show the world she was worthy. Despite the challenges, the heartbreaks, and the early doubts, Cher rose above it all. She became a legend, the power of resilience and the belief in oneself. This is just a glimpse into Cher's incredible journey. There's so much more to her story. Her iconic fashion sense, her outspoken personality, and her dedication to social causes. But for now, let this be a reminder that dreams can come true, no matter where you start in life. Just like Cher, with a little bit of grit and a whole lot of heart, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. Cher's life has been a mix of music, fame, and personal challenges. Her second marriage to Greg Allman in 1975 was no exception. It was a whirlwind romance that quickly turned stormy. Greg's struggles with heroin addiction put a strain on their relationship. It was getting harder for a woman like Cher, who saw her biological father being a drug addict. Cher, fresh out of her divorce with Sonny Bono, wasn't prepared for the chaos. Nine days after the wedding, Cher filed for divorce. Greg, however, cleaned himself up and convinced her to give him another chance. Despite the effort, their life together remained hard. As to say they were not compatible, the stress even impacted Cher's career, causing a temporary hiatus from her solo show. A small reunion with Sonny for a new variety show further complicated things. The public was confused about the nature of the relationship they have and the show flopped. Meanwhile, Cher discovered she was pregnant with Greg's son, Elijah Blue. This news brought Greg back, but the damage was done. The marriage ended in 1979. Through it all, Cher was determined to carve her own path in the music industry. She embraced the rock culture, a far cry from her Sonny and Cher pop beginnings. She even formed her own band, Black Rose, but it was short-lived. However, Cher's solo album, Take Me Home, proved to be a massive success. The title track became an anthem, making her status as a solo superstar. This period marked Cher's true entry into the rock and roll world. She even entered the acting industry, the world where entertaining was harder, but as the powerful woman she is, she did her best, showed people how powerful her skills are made, made her name in the acting industry, and won many, many hearts. Years later, the complexities of her personal life resurfaced. Her son, Elijah, in a recent interview, revealed being sent to boarding school as a child. He said it was because of Cher's busy career, hinting at a disconnect in their relationship. Though acknowledging it wasn't always easy, he said that their bond is a work in progress. Cher's story also includes another chapter. Her child, Chastity Bono, came out as transgender in 2008 and transitioned to become Chaz Bono. Cher has been a vocal supporter throughout Chaz's journey, showcasing the strength and evolution of their family dynamic. Cher's life is an example of strength and determination. Through failed marriages, addiction battles, and family struggles, she has consistently reinvented herself, remaining a powerful force in music and entertainment. Cher's life has been a mix of music, fame, and personal challenges. Her second marriage to Greg Allman in 1975 was no exception. It was a whirlwind romance that quickly turned stormy. Greg's struggles with heroin addiction put a strain on their relationship. It was getting harder for a woman like Cher, who saw her biological father being a drug addict. Cher, fresh out of her divorce with Sonny Bono, wasn't prepared for the chaos. Nine days after the wedding, Cher filed for divorce. Greg, however, cleaned himself up and convinced her to give him another chance. 
Despite the effort, their life together remained hard. As to say they were not compatible, the stress even impacted Cher's career, causing a temporary hiatus from her solo show. A small reunion with Sonny for a new variety show further complicated things. The public was confused about the nature of the relationship they have, and the show flopped. Meanwhile, Cher discovered she was pregnant with Greg's son, Elijah Blue. This news brought Greg back, but the damage was done. The marriage ended in 1979. Through it all, Cher was determined to carve her own path in the music industry. She embraced the rock culture, a far cry from her Sonny and Cher pop beginnings. She even formed her own band, Black Rose, but it was short-lived. However, Cher's solo album, Take Me Home, proved to be a massive success. The title track became an anthem, making her status as a solo superstar. This period marked Cher's true entry into the rock and roll world. She even entered the acting industry. The world where entertaining was harder, but as the powerful woman she is, she did her best showed people how powerful her skills are made, made her name in the acting industry, and won many, many hearts. Years later, the complexities of her personal life resurfaced. Her son Elijah, in a recent interview, revealed being sent to boarding school as a child. He said it was because of Cher's busy career, hinting at a disconnect in their relationship. Though acknowledging it wasn't always easy, he said that their bond is a work in progress. Cher's story also includes another chapter. Her child, Chastity Bono, came out as transgender in 2008 and transitioned to become Chaz Bono. Cher has been a vocal supporter throughout Chaz's journey, showcasing the strength and evolution of their family dynamic. Cher's life is an example of strength and determination. Through failed marriages, addiction battles, and family struggles, she has consistently reinvented herself, remaining a powerful force in music and entertainment. 80 years of Cher 80 candles flickered on Cher's birthday cake, casting a warm glow on her face. Gone were the days of jet black hair and beautiful costumes, replaced by a dress of silver and comfy cashmere sweaters. But the fire in her eyes still burned bright. Life hadn't always been a walk in the park for Cher, far from it. Her childhood was full of instability, with a father who struggled and a mother who chased acting dreams. Money was tight, and security felt like a distant memory. But Cher, even as a little girl, had a fighter spirit. She sang in the shower, danced in her room, and dreamed of a life bigger than the small town she bounced between. Hollywood beckoned, and Cher, with her raw talent and undeniable charisma, grabbed hold of the dream. But the road to stardom wasn't paved with glitter. She faced rejection, heartbreak, and the constant pressure to conform to a mold that never quite fit. Yet Cher wouldn't be boxed in. She reinvented herself, one iconic look and powerful song after another. From the Sonny and Cher days to her solo career, she pushed boundaries, defied expectations, and proved that a woman could be strong, sexy, and talented on her own terms. Sure, there were bumps along the way. A couple of bad romances, some questionable fashion choices we all have them, Cher. But Cher never let the negativity dim her light. She learned from her mistakes, dusted herself off, and kept moving forward. Now, at 80, Cher wasn't slowing down. She was just shifting gears. The music career was still there. The occasional concert, a chance to bail out her classic hits and remind the world of her timeless voice. But her focus had broadened. Philanthropy became a passion. Helping those less fortunate, especially children facing similar struggles to her own, brought her immense satisfaction. She spent time with her family, her children and grandchildren, cherishing the love and laughter they brought. She traveled the world, not as a young starlet chasing fame, but as a seasoned woman appreciating different cultures and soaking in new experiences. Most importantly, she spent time with herself. Finally, there was peace within, a deep acceptance of the life she'd built, the battles she'd fought, and the woman she'd become. 80 wasn't the end of Cher's story. It was a new chapter, a chapter filled with happiness, purpose, and a whole.